Good crowd here at the Times Union Center. This is the home floor of the Siena Saints, where they have won 36 straight ball games. Terrific veteran crew of officials and quarter Mike Kitts, Brian O'Connell, and we are underway here in the capital city of New York State. Siena is the top seed with a 25-6 overall record. There you see the second longest home court winning streak behind only Kansas in the entire country. And you see the Ryder Bronx starting off in zone defense. Manhattan in the quarterfinals bothered the Saints with their 2-3 zone. And as we said, Tommy Dempsey will try and junk things up out of the zone. Double into the post at times, try and keep the basketball out of Clarence Jackson's hands on the perimeter. And they'll invite Ronald Moore to be a scorer and not a passer. Jubilix, a very good three-point shooter, misfires on his first attempt. Well, with the way Ronald Moore's been struggling from the perimeter, I assume that's just the way it's going to be now. Standard operating procedure to try and zone the Saints. Franklin off the steal will go to the line to shoot two. Let's take a look at our coaching matchup brought to you by Anaconda Sports, home of The Rock, and Tommy Dempsey in year number five as head coach at Ryder University. And as you see a couple of years ago, as Mac Coach of the Year, led the Bronx to the title game of this tournament where they lost to the Siena Saints. Franklin gets the roll for our first point of the ball game. Here's a good look at the conference player of the year. 6'5", senior from Reading, PA, has the first two points of our first semifinal. And extending the pressure defense here. They use this 1-2-2 trap, and they can use it a couple of different ways to speed you up or slow you down. Here trying to speed it up. Rossiter stood his ground and denied Ringgold. Here's Ronald Moore. Jubilis again, given some room to shoot in spite of the fact that on the year he is at 41%. Ryder now man-to-man, -man. so you'll see them switching defenses throughout, trying to figure out if they can get themselves into a defensive rhythm. Well, it seems fairly clear that Tommy Dempsey says on his defensive scouting report, allow Ubalis to shoot until he makes it. Bad miss from the left side by Brandon Penn, coming off a poor performance in yesterday's quarterfinal round. And you see the Bronx passing up some shots that's out of character for them. But again, the game plan different for this particular game. Try and limit possessions. Pass intended for Franklin out of bounds, and Siena will keep it. And again, the other half of our coaching matchup, brought to you by Anaconda Sports, home of the Rock. Fran McCaffrey in his fifth year, looking for a third straight league championship. He is third all-time in MAC history in winning percentage, behind Speedy Morris of LaSalle and Fran Priscilla of the Manhattan Jaspers. Here's Clarence Jackson. He's off the mark, and everybody's called to start the ball game. I think Edwin Ubalis completely off guard that he is not being guarded right now and instead of just going quick one bouncing right into it he kind of doesn't know how to react to being that wide open Ryan Thompson with the first field goal of the afternoon here is Ubalis again the closest man to him is teammate Franklin and that time he knocks down the free throw line shot and that time a little bit more energy heading into his jump shot instead of being flat foot again I can't remember the last time he's probably seen a defense backing off of him like that. Well, Ubalis had 10 points in the quarterfinal game. He's not gone off at all here this weekend offensively like he can. Thompson coming off a big 22-point performance yesterday. Now has five. And that's a good sign for the Ryder Bronx because Thompson really struggled in both the matchups against the Siena Saints. And as we mentioned, the Saints swept the Bronx. And back in December, Thompson was held to four points on only one of eight shooting. Again, more left wide open, and he continues to struggle from the floor. And he will have those open looks from eight to ten feet all day long. He's got to hit a couple of them. But until he does, the defense will allow him to shoot at will. Again, Ronald Moore is the nation's leader in assists at nearly eight per game. And he is the engine that runs this machine that when Siena's offense is working with all five parts, it's as good as any. And we've seen a lot of teams try and turn him into a shooter instead of a passer because his passing gets everybody going, gets his teammates involved, and as you see, leading the country in assists. And when he's able to do that and kind of pick people apart, that's when their offense is at its best. you got to force him to take shots, and then he's got to will in a couple of shots. Meanwhile, Ryan Thompson off to a very quick start. You see he's got all seven of Ryder's points. 
the senior from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, who was the preseason conference player of the year, wound up on the first team postseason All-Star roster. Good defensive hustle inside by Ryder to knock it out of bounds with 17 seconds on the shot clock. And against the zone, you got to probe and try to find some soft spots. Ryder will extend out to the perimeter, so you got to put the ball on the deck and get in the lane. Gadsden blocked Rossiter. Franklin gets it back and a chance for three. And how many times do you see that? Their offense struggling, get an extra possession on the offensive glass, much like he did yesterday with eight offensive rebounds. And he's a guy who's got an uncanny ability. He's not a three-point shooter, but he's a three-point playmaker. And he fights through contact. How many times do you see him convert and then have the opportunity at the line? Second foul, Rob, by the way, on Novar Gadsden. That can be a big problem for LeBron. He was the only bright spot the last time these two teams met with the 25 points and 10 rebounds in that ball game. There's Rossiter sealing off the Ryder rebounder for another board. More no, and here comes Ryan Thompson back the other way. He takes off and finishes nine quick points for Thompson. And they'll get out and run, so they're not just going to walk the ball up and try to limit possessions. If they can be aggressive and sneak it out on the break, they'll take it. If not, then bring it back out and run through some offense. Well, yesterday in the quarterfinals, we saw Siena fall behind Manhattan 9-0 early, and they didn't take the lead until early in the second half and off to another relatively slow start to begin this semifinal here this afternoon. And Fred McCaffrey saying one of the keys was you know, we're down 14 to 4, but we never allowed it to get much bigger than that. We kept it at a manageable deficit. Franklin has it stripped away and off his thigh out of bounds. Quick start by the Ryder Bronx and specifically Ryan Thompson. He himself has all of the Bronx points and he himself has outscored Sienna here in the early going at the Times Union Center. Hard to get much hotter than Ryan Thompson to start this first MAC semifinal here this afternoon. All nine Ryder points coming from the senior star of the Bronx. Well, it's certainly being aggressive, putting the ball to the floor, driving by guys, initiating the action, spreading you out. He can keep you honest from beyond the three-point line, and this is a good sign right here. Attacking the rim, sneaking a fast break. Little running back there, tucked it under, and then finished right at the rim. Well, yesterday afternoon, Thompson went for 22 points in the 69-57 quarterfinal victory over St. Peter's and he's off to a quicker start here this afternoon. Much of his damage in yesterday's quarterfinal was done from the free throw line where he hit 11 of 12 from the line. Here though, he's knocking down shots and driving strong to the bucket. And he's been hot throughout the end of this regular season. One of the reasons why he was able to fight his way back onto the first team. Ronald Moore, first team all-conference point guard. Shot clock down to 13. Ubalus guarded by Penn. Tries to take him off the bounce. Back out to Moore. Forced to shoot again, and this time he tickles the twine. Uh, he's going to have those open looks, and one thing that Graham McCaffrey's been talking about for the last three to four weeks is that he's just got to make a couple of them. He doesn't have to go four out of five from the perimeter, but he's got to make a couple of shots just to keep you honest and make you think twice about not guarding them. And again, the irony is that he is going to be best remembered probably for the two big three-point shots he made in last year's NCAA tournament upset of Ohio State. Let's send it over to the third member of our team, Ben Parisi. Thanks, Doug. You know, Sienna led the nation this season in fewest fouls committed per game as a team, a major reason for their success. In the two regular season matchups with Ryder, the Bronx only shot 11 free throws total, a big reason why the Saints beat them by 26 in February and 22 points back in December. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ben. Meanwhile, Ryan Thompson just continues to stay hot with that corner three. It's now 12-9 Ryder. He's got all 12. Bronx points. Almost as many points in a few minutes as he had in the two ball games. There's 14 points total in the first two games against Sienna. Well, that's the one thing talking about, talking to Fran McCaffrey earlier today, he said, you know, one thing you can't forget about is that Ryan Thompson's got the ability to put a team on his shoulders and carry him. 
Connor Moore perhaps starting to feel it a bit. And again, just make you think about not guarding them whatsoever. You make a couple of shots, even though that's your game plan, you see whether or not you're able to stay with it long enough. Sometimes coaches, all of a sudden, they make a couple of shots and start twitching over there. You sure we don't want to guard them? Thompson has it knocked away, and here come the Saints. Three on two. Moore gives up to Franklin, and he is fouled hard by Youngblood into the ball game for Ryder. Great bounce pass. Threading the needle by Ronald Moore. Come up with the extra possession by forcing the turnover, and he leads them perfectly right in stride like a good quarterback to a receiver making a cut. Franklin going hard to the rim. Takes the hard foul, but that's a good foul. You can't allow him to get that done. Alex Franklin, known by his coach, Fran McCaffrey, as Alexander, known by his family as just Xander. Don't miss out on the excitement. It's still not too late to get your tickets now for the Citizens Bank Mac Men's Championship game. Tomorrow night here at the Times Union Center in Albany, New York. Get your tickets now by calling 1-800-30-EVENT or log on at timesunion.com, the Citizens Bank Mac Basketball Championships, where magic happens. We're hoping for some magical moments here in the semifinals this afternoon. This is the first of our two with Ryder taking on Siena. And the top-seeded Saints back on top by one, 13-12. And unlike the last time these two teams met, the pressure defense and trapping defense not bothering the Bronx. Ronald Moore shovel pass to Edwin Ubelis. They, along with Alex Franklin, the most successful senior class in program history. And when you augment it with a terrific junior class, including Ryan Rossiter, Siena can be tough to beat. Well, Ronald Moore makes a lot of fundamentally sound passes. That one with a little extra English through his legs, but once again putting it right where the guy needs to catch and score. Well, he has two classic partners in crime, in Rossiter and Franklin, who both run the pick and roll to perfection. Ringgold with his first two, and finally somebody not named Ryan Thompson scores for Ryder. And he went right at Rossiter, and you've got to do that. You've got to go right at his chest. Ryder basketball at Corbett makes the call. And so the Bronx get it back, trailing by a point. Here comes the trap. Robinson has it deflected away. Ryan Thompson able to track it down. And Ubalist got to come up with that loose ball. Slow to get after it. He's got to have some energy. Just over eight minutes gone here in the first. Ringgold's pass right to Jackson, and here come the Saints running again. Knocked away nicely by Robinson. Still loose on the floor. The whistle comes. And it appears that a timeout. No, a foul has been called. A timeout has been called by Ryder. We'll take a break and get it sorted out. Quick start, Sienna by one. Center at Albany with Siena leading this first semifinal 15 to 14. And coming off the called timeout by Ryder. Another break in the action here. Well, this is the men's and women's basketball championships going on this weekend here in Albany, upcoming. Many more around the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference including rowing April 18th in West Windsor, New Jersey. And on down the line, men's lacrosse heating up. They will have their championship just down the road in Poughkeepsie at Marist College. And the baseball championships also in upstate New York in Fishkill at Dutchess Stadium. All coming up later on this spring around the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. 
Well, we've got the two men's semifinals for men's basketball this afternoon. Among the winners already this season. Congratulations to all. Three from Loyola. And then one each from Iona, Niagara, Marist, and Manhattan. And actually, we can add the Marist women to that list because earlier today, right here in this building, Brian Georges and the Red Foxes, what a surprise. They won again and once again cut down the nets here at the Times Union Center. Yeah, fifth consecutive championship. And Rachel Fitz going out just like she came into this league as the MVP of the MAC tournament as a freshman. Good bookends to that career. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that championship game as it occurred here this afternoon. There is Rachel Fitz, the most accomplished player in conference history. Yeah, earlier this week honored as the only three-time MAC player of the year. And anytime they needed a big bucket, she came up with the big play. And you know, she probably could have been a four-time conference player of the year. She was rookie of the year as a freshman. and certainly was one of the best players right from the time she walked onto campus at Marist College and she caps it off with a victory and hoisting another trophy here today. Even if you've done it as often as they have is clearly dominating this league like nobody else has. Seven straight regular season championships, five straight tournament titles. It still is an old hat when you're hoisting that trophy. By the way, Rachel Fitz is now 31 points shy of the all-time record for leading scorer in MAC history. So they, will, they will move on to the postseason, and she's got a real shot. Well, remember, her freshman year, they were able to advance all the way to the Sweet 16. So if you want to break that record, the easiest way is get a couple extra games. To get extra games, you got to win them in the NCAA tournament. Well, the Marist women, much like the Siena men, the last couple of years have made a lot of noise on the national stage and in the NCAA tournament. Makes it much tougher to sneak up on your opponents from around the country now that you've built that reputation. Mike Ringgold carving out space, working hard as always with Ryan Rossiter trying to defend, and there's Rossiter getting the rebound. And Rossiter's size just holding his ground can bother Ringgold. Kyle Downey and Owen Wignot in the ball game off the bench for Siena. Here's Alex Franklin, the conference player of the year. Felt the contact, but missed the shot. Terrific interior passing, though. He and Rossiter work so well together. This is Jonathan Thompson, no relation to Ryan Thompson. Out there with Gadsden, Ringgold, and Patrick Mansell, who has the ball now. Ryder, the number five seed in this tournament, in their road Cranberry uniforms. And again, Ringgold going right at Ryan Rossiter. Uh, good patience, and as you said, going right at him. And you've got to do that to try and neutralize his size. Here's Kyle Downey, who missed about a month of action late in the season due to a broken foot. Back and healthy now after some hard rehab. Good defense by the Bronx again inside, making it tough on the Saints. And collapsing out of the zone defense to bother the Saints once they got the ball into the paint. Jonathan Thompson's pass, knocked away by Ronald Moore among the Steels leaders in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, and then the reach-in foul called on Jonathan Thompson. They can't turn the ball over against this Saint team because nobody's faster in the open floor, maybe the entire country, than Ronald Moore. I mean, he takes it, miss or make, and is coming right up your back. Now, Ronald Moore has run a mile in under five minutes. His mother, Rhonda, took him to the Atlanta Olympics back in 96 to meet Michael Johnson and Marion Jones. He has been a runner his whole life, and that certainly shows here on the basketball floor. Well, he is as quick as Michael Johnson with the ball in his hands from baseline to baseline. I'm not sure that there's a faster player in the country, and he does it every single possession. You score, you figure out, oh, I'm okay. No, you better sprint your rear end back because he's coming right up your back. Meanwhile, Rhonda Baker, his mom, is made most every game during her son's four-year tenure, making the drive up from Conshohocken, in Pennsylvania. Franklin misfires, rebound Thompson. Quick outlet. Here comes Jonathan Thompson, but Sienna gets back defensively. Gadsden spotting up. Way off the mark. Wignot clears. Moore, no-look pass. Rossiter. Again, good defense inside, but this time the foul called on Dara Endiazuma, 
a 6'10 freshman from Nigeria just into the ball game. Well, he's in the game to give him some post defense. Terrific speed, as you said, a look away. Rossiter couldn't gather, though. And there's the size of Endi Azuma, the guy who didn't play very much all season long. And then all of a sudden, Tommy Dempsey said, we just got to get some size in to be able to guard guys inside. And Rossiter's numbers show you why he made first team all conference. He's also Siena's best foul shooter. And he gets to the foul line quite frequently. It's interesting. Didn't play well yesterday. Struggled from the field just two of seven from the floor. But when you look up, guess what? He's got another double-double. His 14th in the last 16 games. Yeah, six of his ten points yesterday coming from the free throw line on a perfect six for six. Now a perfect eight for eight in the MAC championships. Four seconds to get across for Ryder. And the foul at midcourt given with one second to get it over. And without the foul, it was going to be a turnover either way because it was going to be a backcourt violation. Thompson put himself in a difficult position there. You got to understand they're trying to funnel you to the sideline and get you into that trap. The freshman went, went right to the wrong place. But the foul on Wignot bailed him out. Just under nine minutes remaining here in the first half. Ryder came to Albany saying, got something to prove. They underperformed for the most part during the regular season, going only 9-9 nine and nine after being picked third in the preseason. But as you mentioned, Rob, they played better basketball for the most part in February, led by Ryan Thompson, who played his best basketball during that stretch. And what's interesting, a regular Ryder-Siena game, we'd have pace going up and down so far. Ryder's done a good job of being able to get this instead of a gallop down to a trot. Along with Rob Kennedy and Vin Parisi, this is Doug Sherman at the Times Union Center in Albany. The rainbow three by Downey. And certainly he can be a guy that, when they play junk defense, can be a terrific answer from beyond the three-point line. Sophomore from Fairport, New York, just outside of Rochester. Tough shot. Yeah, not the shot you want if you're Ryder. Andy Azuma with a hand in his face, but Gadsden gets the offensive rebound, and Fran McCaffrey on the Siena bench claps his hands in disgust. Shot clock at 23, and a bad pass by Andy Azuma. After nice hustle to make sure they didn't turn it over, he then turned it over back to the Saints. Siena will have it when we come back, and a four-point lead here in the back semis. Back here in Albany, Siena with a four-point lead, and the Saints over the last four years have run the basic pick and roll as well as it can be run, and here's an example as we go inside the play. Well, we talk about them being an old-school team. Nothing more old-school than to pick and roll. Let's see it right here. And one thing with Rama Moore, when they don't guard him, he's got to bring the basketball in and force him to guard. Right there, you get the pick, and here comes the roll as Rossiter takes the bounce pass. The key to that play, putting the ball on the floor. When you make that bounce pass, now all of a sudden the defense isn't able to deflect. Just a simple play executed by one of the best point guards in the country. And just another assist for Ronald Moore, who yesterday became the all-time assist king in Siena College history and is nearing the all-time league record. Could get it here this weekend. You wonder how many points have been derived over the last three years by Ryan Rossiter and over the last four years by Alex Franklin on just that simple play. And it starts with the good solid pick, so the bigs have to give up their body. But one thing you know, if you get a good piece of the defender on the screen, he's going to get you the basketball. Good interior passing for the Bronx. Back out front for Thompson, who has been hot. Can't get that one to fall, though. He's stuck on 12 points. And Sienna back with the ball up four. But Tommy Dempsey will take that look every trip up and down the floor. Good offense execution. O.D. Anasicki with a knee brace on that left knee injured yesterday in the quarterfinals. Misfires on his first attempt since coming off the Sienna bench. Ryan Thompson through traffic and the foul. It appears Owen Wignot whistled for the personal. Well, if you can't make it here to the Times Union Center to see the MAC Men's Championship game in person, be sure to watch it live tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, on ESPN2. The winner of this ball game, either Ryder or Sienna, will take on the winner of our next semifinal between Niagara and Fairfield in the championship. Monday night, tomorrow, 7 Eastern, on ESPN2. That foul on Wignot, his second, and so he heads to the bench. 
Edwin Ubel is back on the floor. He and Rossiter jostle for the rebound, and it's the taller Rossiter who pulls it away. 6.50 remaining here in the first half. 20-17, to 17, Siena with the lead and the basketball. And Downey again, a guy that you got to make sure you find out of the zone defense. Don't allow more to take shots. you got to make sure that you mark and find Downey. Under 10 to shoot. Moore drives on Thompson. Throws it up towards the rim. Anasicki gets blocked, and here comes the Bronx. Gadsden gives to Robinson, who goes right to the rim. Now, Siena with a little different lineup on the floor than you've seen throughout much of the season. Clarence Jackson and Alex Franklin on the bench. Downey misfires. And a rebounding foul. Well, the Bronx have been able to get out and run, and they've pushed the pace given the opportunity. Little roll reversal as the point guard Robinson running the floor, and the big guy Gadsden showing you he can play a little point forward, leading the break. Yeah, those are some of the guard skills we talked about yesterday. Rob out of Gadsden, who at 6'7", 230, has that type of ability. Yeah, he's got a good package, strength, skill, and when he now learns how to take full advantage of that strength and punishes people inside, he's got a chance to be an accomplished scorer in the MAC, much like Ryan Thompson has been his entire career. Thompson now with 14 points. Thompson, although earlier in his career, was more deferential to his older brother Jason and some of the other veterans on this Ryder team. But he is much more the scorer the last two years, and perhaps that's a role Gadsden will evolve into in the coming years. Franklin misses. Gatson fights for it. Robinson has it. Here's the baseball outlet. Thompson with Jackson to beat. No whistle. And there to clean it up. Ringo. Well, you talked about the fact, Rob, that Ryder's going to not try and run too much. But when it's there, they'll take it. And that's the thing. You're slowing it down once you get into the half-court offense and forcing them to take some time off the clock. But when they've been able to run and get out on the break, they certainly have been aggressive. Thompson went down hard. It's like he's all right. But how about the hustle by Mike Ringle to make the trip with them and go get it on the offensive glass. He does all the little things. The consummate garbage guy. Well, for so many athletes, the headline is they hustled. For Ringle, the headline would be if he never hustled, if he didn't hustle, because he hustles all the time. And to see him be that trailer in that circumstance, not a surprise at all. Always great energy and always a guy that competes every play. A little floater off the mark by Robinson. And Rossiter really went and got that rebound. Some guys rebound when the basketball's in their area. Great rebounders go rebound it even when it's not in their area. Backdoor cut. Jackson lays it off the glass and in. And again, the perfect bounce pass for Moore. I wonder how many of those record assists have been off bounce passes. So many guys don't put it to the floor. You want to get it in tough spots. The bounce pass is the best way to get it there. Moore's third assist here this afternoon. And for Clarence Jackson, after going 2 for 11 yesterday in the quarterfinals from beyond the arc, perhaps driving to the bucket on a backdoor, something that could get him going. No question about it. The other thing the bounce pass does is allow the guy who's receiving the basketball to adjust to it. Five to shoot. Gadsden does just that. Ringgold after the rebound. He's got it. Right back to the 10. Oh, he was working at home possession. He and Rossiter jostling for position. The one thing he's got, Rossiter may have the size and a little bulk, but Ringgold's got some quickness on it. Moore with seven points. He is definitely feeling his shot better today than he has in weeks. Oh, maybe months. I mean, he's been shooting it over the last 21 games at 25%. That's the reason why he's been so wide open and unguarded. He's starting to make them pay for it. So now, Ryder defensively, you would assume, would start to think about adjusting defensively. Rossiter clears. Or if you're Tommy Dempsey, do you wait because... Well, like you say, over the last 21 games, Moore has been so poor shooting the ball. Does that go away in one half of basketball? Well, I think you stay with your game plan, especially when you've got a lead like they do right now. Mansell will try again. Well, that's the only thing he's going to do in the ball game. He's a specialist. He's in there for one reason. That's to take and make threes. You can't allow him to be that wide open. Well, he went 0 for 3 yesterday. Missed his first here, but then knocked down his next. And Franklin, the conference player of the year, trying to assert himself. 
And a foul called on the shot, which gets the crowd here in Albany on its feet. Takes us to a media timeout. We'll step away from the Times Union Center in Albany with Ryder leading Siena. It is a Catholic Jesuit university that stimulates the intellect and unleashes potential. It is a university known for its rigorous academic programs, state-of-the-art classrooms, and personalized attention. An experience that prepares students to succeed and to serve others for a more just and peaceful world. An opportunity that will inspire for a lifetime. Tradition, quality, leadership, value. We are Canisius College, where leaders are made. Back at the Times Union Center in Albany, New York, our first men's semifinal has Ryder on top by four, and with their changing defenses, Siena trying to attack, and Coach, take us inside the play. Well, Ronald Moore, let's take you inside Ronald Moore's head. You're going to see as the zone goes here, Mansell's going to lose track of Jackson going along the baseline, not seeing man and ball. He gets beat on that. Again, inside, not just the play, but the head of the point guard right here, Ronald Moore. Recognizing what's going on. Freeze it again here. Sees the split, gets himself right into the lane. And again, if you're not going to guard him, he's been able to make them play. Ringgold comes up a little late for the challenge. But going inside the play, it's going inside the head of one of the best point guards in the history of this conference. And he is one of 11 finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, which goes annually to the nation's best point guard. Clearly, Ronald Moore, a difference maker for the Saints, and it's that type of court leadership and court understanding that has gotten him the nickname Maestro. Yep, the guy, and he, that's what he does. He orchestrates this well-oiled offensive machine. Interesting as well, Ryder playing much different than they usually do. This is a team that's been primarily a man-to-man -man defensive team all season long. And as we said right from the start, Tommy Dempsey said, I got to be honest with myself and my team. We tried to play with them up and down, tried to play the men, didn't work. We were down 30 in each of those games. He said, in the regular season, I wouldn't change things up just for one opponent. He said, once you get in the tournament now, all bets are off. And so he said, we just got to you know, have the confidence in the game plan. He said, one thing, it was easy to sell the guys because they saw what happened the last time we tried to go up and down and play a man-to-man. -man. So far, so good. Even when they give up a couple of open shots, he'll take it. Okay, let's send it back over to Vin. Well, what you just saw, guys, in that last timeout, having to be called by Ryder, is exactly what Tommy Dempsey said to his team in the last huddle. He expects Sienna to press here the rest of the half. He expects them to start trapping their pick and rolls in the half court. Dempsey did tell his group, guys, once we get it past half court, use some clock. Use some clock. Be patient. Back to you guys. Thank you, Vin. And I'm also curious, Coach. Patrick Mansell getting extended playing time here. Defensively, he can be a liability. And as we see handling the pressure, he's not the guy you want handling the ball. He is a three-point specialist, pure and simple. If he's not knocking down that shot, is he going to keep getting these minutes? No, especially if he gets beat like we saw in those two defenses. But if he makes shots, yeah, you keep him out there. And again, the other thing he does is just having him on the floor sometimes gives space for Ryan Thompson to drive the basketball or Justin Robinson to get into lanes because you've got to respect this three-point shooting. Here's Penn along the baseline, strong to the bucket but missed it. Rossiter winds up taking it away from Ringgold. Under two minutes remaining first half. There's Mansell deflecting the pass, and the Bronx take it away. I needed the bounce pass there again as the defender got up and got a hand on. The rider has mixed things up. They've run when the opportunity's been there, when they've had numbers. But when they've gotten themselves into half court, much different. They never take the air out of the basketball. They come at you every single possession. Much different here today. Ubalist knocked away that pass from Penn, and the Saints take it right back. Sienna with its starting five back on the floor together. Rossiter backing down on Ringgold to the left hand, and it rattles out. Well, good move. He was patient, got himself a good look. Those are shots he usually knocks down, one of the top field goal percentage shooters, not only leading the MAC, but 12th in the country. Ringgold already with nine rebounds. Gadsen's got 10. Under a minute remaining first half. The Bronx have been more active than we've seen throughout this season on the backboards. 
Ryan Thompson just cut back door along the baseline, calling for the lob pass. It never came. Ringgold again with a quick shot over Rossiter. Well, terrific job of utilizing the shot clock, getting a good look, and there's that unorthodox jump hook that you see from Ringgold. Like a pitcher who kind of changes his delivery point, instead of the extended jump hook, he takes it just about from the side. Little sidearm, sidewinder, but it worked. Yeah, he's three inches shorter than his defender. He shoots it on the way up and catches him off balance. Into the paint, Rossiter hands it off for more, and he somehow gets it off the glass and in. One second left of the half. The heave is off the mark, and we have an entertaining 20 minutes in the books. And I'll tell you what, Tommy Dempsey is thrilled to get to the locker room with the game still on. The Welcome back to the Citizens Bank Mac Basketball Championship presented by Pepsi Max. We are at the Times Union Center here in Albany, New York. And our score at the intermission, Ryder 30 and Siena 28. And welcome back, everybody. Doug Sherman along with former Division I assistant coach Rob Kennedy. And as we were talking about, Ryder certainly derives its energy when it's going well from Ryan Thompson. Well, he had such a great end of the regular season, having a terrific back tournament as well. Can't start any better than he did, scoring the first nine points. And I think, Doug, you alluded to the fact that he really established a little bit of a will early on. Like, hey, we're not going to back down. Instead, we're here to play. Got his team that energy early on. Well, the game plan is to let Rommel Moore shoot the basketball. For the Saints, luckily, he was able to make shots. But with him making shots, it doesn't allow him to get other people involved. Ryder would much rather him shoot the basketball than pass, limiting him to just three assists in that first half. Here's a look at the FYE first half statistic. Points in the paints. You wouldn't have thought it was going to be that way. No, but certainly Mike Ringgold with ten points. Nearly a double-double in that first half with his nine rebounds. The biggest key for me as well, Doug, is the fact that Ryder, not a very good rebounding team all season long, getting out-rebounded by nearly three a game. They dominated the glass in that first half. Ten offensive rebounds and certainly out-rebounding them by eight. One of the reasons why Alex Franklin so quiet. Not quiet for Ryan Thompson with those 15 big points, especially setting the tone early. Yeah, the only Siena player with more than one field goal made in the first half, Ron Moore. Yeah, and when you look at the rest of his team, just 5 of 21 from the floor. That's roller reversal. He's shooting the ball well. His teammates are not. One name we have not called much at all, Edwin Ubalis. He's been quiet, not attacking, not playing with great energy. This guy with the balls played with great energy. That being Mike Ringgold, undersized, but certainly not underperformed. There he is working again for the offensive rebound and a chance to go to the free throw line. As you said, the headline would be if he wasn't hustling, and not just in a game, it's every play. He is a great competitor. This is the only part of his game that certainly is a struggle when he goes to the line, and that's why you got to put him at the line, but think about it. Santa doesn't foul anybody, so it's a little different for the Saints. How about that for a shooter's That's a role. shooter's role for Mike Ringle. Nice soft touch and, up oh, there. Yeah, he'll, he'll bank him. He'll take him. He'll, <laughs> hey, he's such a poor foul shooter. A potential jump ball off a foul shot is not out of the question. He could wedge it. I mean, <laughs> from that angle, you think he could wedge I, it. I always tell him, he was a longtime camper, one of my favorites. I always tell him, tell everybody you didn't go to the foul shooting station, all right? Just tell me you were back in the dorm or something. <laughs> I want no responsibility for that stroke. My goodness. Well, he got one out of two, and that's a lot better than his season percentage of one out of three. Moore has it stripped away, and again, there's Ringgold hussing along the baseline. Couldn't save it, though, and so Siena will keep with 21 seconds with which to work on the shot clock. Good look there at Mike Ringgold, 6'7", 215-pound junior out of Roman Catholic High School in Philadelphia. The average is 11 points and just under seven rebounds per game. And again, for somebody of his size and build and relative lack of basketball skill, in terms of shooting the basketball, he is just an all-star. Three to shoot. Ubalus fires it up. No. Long rebound. Moore. And the Saints have it once again. Clarence Jackson. Deep three off the mark. Robinson pulls it away from Alex Franklin. And so Jackson continues to not be able to find the mark coming off that horrific shooting game in the quarterfinals. 
Ringgold got himself too far under the basket on the near side, so he just adjusted. Knuckleball change of pace, doesn't matter what it is. Creative around the rim. You talked about lack of basketball skill. You're right, lack of shooting skill. But he's got an incredible knack of finishing around the rim. Yeah, it certainly didn't mean any disrespect. No, I mean, I, I it is, he yep. has an innate ability to overcome the fact that he can't shoot and knows what he's good at. You know, so many guys try to prove to you that, no, I can shoot the bat. He knows what he can do, plays to his strengths. We talked about the fact that the post players for Siena, Rossiter and Franklin, rarely venture too far away from the basket as Penn knocks down the three. The same is said about Ringgold, understanding what he's best at. And there again, another basketball skill from Ringgold. He's a very good passer out of the double team. It's hard to go trap him inside if you double. This is Ryder's largest lead of the afternoon. The foul will send Franklin to the line. Well, he saw the Saints at times be bothered by the zone defense of the Jaspers last night. And certainly same here today. And again, this is Ryder team that's not a zone team. They play mostly exclusively man-to-man -man throughout the season. Tommy Dempsey's team will throw a little zone at you here and there. But the game plan, he said, I know how we played all year. We're going to mix it up change things up and by junking it up they've been able to get the pace that they needed to stay in this ball game 17 20 remaining in regulation Ryder with the basketball on top by four Thompson can run the point as well as he can run the two or three in the half court set off the bounce can't get the roll and Rossiter who did a nice job of closing out top in there for the defensive rebound. Ubalis can't get it to go. Robinson knocked it out of bounds. Sienna will keep. And the Saints have to make one of those shots. Trying to rush the ball up the floor before the zone gets set up. That's fine, but some of those shots got to go because if not, now all of a sudden you're playing a rider because it's quick shot. If they rebound it, able to walk it back up. Franklin can't get the roll and he will shoot two. Again, this is a Siena team that during the regular season swept Ryder by scores of 84-62 here in Albany and 80-54 just last weekend down in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Much different story here this afternoon. Well, soft spot of that zone, especially as the guards out top try to extend the zone defense and get out to the wings. And always the high post area right at the foul line. And Alex Franklin's been able to get to that area, which has allowed him to get to the foul line. Only way he's been scoring. He's got one field goal and nine free throws for his 11 points. Ringgold, your power forward, dribbling against pressure, finding his teammate for what would have been a terrific dunk, but Penn couldn't finish. Now that is just a great play by Mike Ringgold. They come up empty, but not because of the effort of Ringgold. Getting it deep into the lane, forcing the D up. Ubalus no, there for the tip-in is Franklin. Now last night when they were struggling to score the basketball, Franklin was there to get those extra opportunities, the extra possessions by crashing the glass. The crowd's starting to get back into it. Well, their Saints have retied the ball game. Ball goes out of bounds, and it'll stay at this end as Jackson and Mansell came together and collided. No foul call, though, and so Thompson will inbound from across the court from his own bench. And again, the crowd here in Albany starting to make more noise for the hometown Siena Saints on defense. Pick and roll back to Ringgold. Extra pass, and this time, Penn doesn't miss. Now, great execution, solid screen and roll to start it off, and then the extra pass. Again, the multiple skills. Jackson hits the three. And boy, could they use that. Struggling mightily yesterday, just 2 of 11 for beyond the three-point line. His first three of this ball game. And Siena's first lead of the second half on top 39-38. Mismatch inside. Ringgold being defended by Moore and Jackson. But he missed the layup. Ringgold gets it back. Kick it back outside. And now here's where they'll run some clock and settle it back down. Mike Ringle, you can see he is tired right now, and you can see why. He has just given it his all. Thompson drives right around Eubulus for the two. And by pulling the basketball back out, they get some spacing. And once you get five guys on the perimeter, some driving room 
for Thompson to get all the way to the rim. Foul called on Justin Robinson on the drive to the basket. And that takes us to break. Clarence Jackson knocking down the three to give the Saints the lead. But the visitors from Ryder University back on top thanks to their leader, Ryan Thompson. Here in Albany, New York, Ryder back on top, 40-39. We highlighted in the first half inside the play, the pick and roll done by Sienna. Now let's show Ryder's version, Rob. Oh, let's say, let's stay old school. Here we go, let's let it run. Here comes a good solid pick screen. Roll it right there now. Good screen, he rolls, bang, freeze it again. Here comes the second defender. So you got one, two guys step up, so you got to make the extra pass for the easy layup. Again, Mike Ringle showing you he's got terrific basketball skills, even though he can't shoot the basketball. Not going to be a shooting clinic with my man, Mike, but showing you that he's got a great basketball IQ. Well, how about this for a stat line in 23 minutes, 13 points, 11 rebounds, 3 steals, a block shot, and 3 assists from your power forward. He's got his fourth double-double of the year already, and his tone that he sets, along with Ryan Thompson, just feeds through his teammates. Well, there's Ubalus now. Yeah, there's a guy that's got to get it going a little bit. He's got to have a little bit of the energy that we've seen from Mike Ringle, because he certainly has the talent to do pretty much what he wants on a basketball court at times. Now, well, Ubalus and Ryan Thompson were the two commodities coming into this season that NBA scouts had on their radar screen. Meanwhile, Ringo outplaying them all here in the second half and just doing it with his effort. I mean, all those stats you threw out, none bigger than what he's bringing as far as attitude and competitiveness. Franklin has the ball hang on the rim and then fall through. Well, he's their version, along with Rossiter, of two guys that bring it every night inside as well. So here's where the Saints, even though you've not played well, you still got yourself a one-point lead. Certainly the game plan a rider has worked, but now Sienna's got to step up and get some stops. They stopped Thompson that time, and Ubalus running the break. Jackson calls for the ball on the wing. Instead, Ubalus puts up a tough shot. Yeah, you got to be able to find a better shot than that. Go attack the rim for somebody. Mansell guarded by Franklin back out to Thompson and Ryder now slows it down although here attacking is Robinson and he gets it off the window and in. Here's Ubalus to the bucket and he lost it on the way up but a foul is called. Well the MAC player of the year is announced on Thursday. Alex Franklin continues to announce his presence inside here for Siena. And making himself available right at the soft spot of the zone, pretty much right inside the foul line. You gotta move without the basketball, get to open spots, put some pressure on the zone, and then you gotta bring the energy. You gotta match what Mike Ringle's doing on the other end of the floor, and Franklin's been able to do that. Rossiter's been able to do that. The guy at the line's gotta start doing it. A lot of star power in this ball game, and you get the sense it's gonna come down to one of the stars, or a couple of the stars, taken off. Then replaced by Gatson. Youngblood comes in and Mansell takes a seat. Now you see the numbers for Ubalus. Not up to par. 15 points per game. His season average, second team all conference. And he gets one out of two from the line. And you know Doug very well. A lot of people talked about the fact that maybe Ubalus being put on the second team would kind of fire him up. A lot of people thought he might be the tournament MVP. Not playing like it. Gatson off the nice feed from Ringel. Can you say triple-double? Yeah, breaking the press, putting the ball in Ringgold's hands and allowing him to utilize his quickness, basketball IQ, and his passing ability. Seven minutes gone here in the second half. Ryder trying to upset the number one seed, Sienna Saints. Moore missed the floater, three on two. Here comes Ryder. Gadsden drops it back for Thompson. Kind of a disjointed break, but the Bronx hold on and pull it back out. Thompson for three. Rossiter clears. A little quick. Pull it back out, run through some offense. If it's any other player besides Thompson, Tommy Dempsey's yapping at him. With Thompson, you'll let it go because he's your best player, and he can score that. Moore's pass taken away. Gadsden finds Robinson leaking out. Well, that's just Sienna right there falling asleep for a second. One of the things, one of the keys we said coming in was to hang around. Right now, Ryder's been hanging around. 
Ubalis for three. He's got it. Oh, hiding behind the high ball screen. No need for pick and roll. On the high screen from Rossiter, found himself an open shot. Only a two, not a three. So a two-point shot for Ubalis. Back to a two-point ball game. Whistling a foul before the shot. Things continue to heat up here at the Times Union Center. Justin Robinson of the Bronx trying to take down Edwin Ubalis and the Saints with a spot in the MAC Championship game tomorrow night going to the victor here today. Welcome back to Albany and the combination of Thompson and Ringgold leading Ryder to a two-point lead here midway through the second half. Now let's take a look at the Mac All Decade team. It has been announced, but Mac fans, you can log on to facebook.com slash Mac Sports to vote for who you think is the Mac player of the decade, and there are your candidates. And you and I both agree. We would be voting if we were on Facebook for Luis Flores, but we've had a lot of different guys receive votes. He can make a good case for a number of those players, all stars in their own right. Well, we talked a lot about the defense of Ryder and the adjustments that Tommy Dempsey has made coming into the ball game, and for all intents and purposes, it has been effective so far. Well, certainly the game plan was solid, and they have certainly executed it. Not only limiting possessions, but making sure they get back in transition defense. Remember, this is a Siena Saint team that's as good as anybody in the open floor, especially with Ronald Moore with the basketball in his hands on the break but they have shut them out as far as fast break points. I wonder when the last time Siena played a basketball game without scoring in transition. I, you, I guarantee one thing, not since Fran McCaffrey's been a coach. You have to go back, maybe some of those Rob Lanier teams maybe walk the ball up the floor, but to shut them out as far as fast break points is concerned is really astonishing. Youngblood, tough shot. Ronald Moore has the ball. Let's send it back over to Vin. Doug, what Fran McCaffrey was talking about in the last huddle was the perimeter defense of his team. He feels like riders get into the basket anytime they want, whether it's Ryan Thompson or one of the other guards. Says they're sucking them in too much. He wants them to take contested jump shots. Back to you guys. Thank you, Vin. The uncontested three by Jackson has put Siena back on top by one. And if you're going to play zone, you have to have some zone busters. He's been a zone buster for much of the season, even though he struggled in the quarterfinals. Thompson with five to shoot, gives it off to Robinson. Guarded by Wignot and Rossiter, and Franklin comes away with it. Here comes a transition opportunity for the Saints, and Moore can't get it to go. Well, still a goose egg. Rossiter and Ringgold battling on the floor, and you can see, based on that, how much this game means to all ten guys on the floor. And a little energy, the speed of Moore got himself all the way to the rim, just couldn't finish. Well, he just comes at you with a blaze of speed. Credit Ryan Thompson for bothering him. Not fouling, but putting up some defensive resistance to force Ronald Moore to have to go to his left and try and make a tough shot. Mansell comes in. Heading out, Jamar Youngblood, who seems to have a little bit of a limp as he heads to the bench. Franklin muscled his way up but couldn't get it to go. Rossiter has it stripped by Thompson, and he goes down. Here comes Gadsden. Got away with the double dribble right there. Gadsden dribbled the basketball. Here's where now. Try to probe. Run if you can. If not, bring it back out. Here's Gadsden in the triple team. Passed up an easy shot to create a more difficult one for himself. Bodies fly everywhere again, and the Saints come away with it. Moore drops it off for Rossiter, and the goose egg is no more. And it's no more because he's leading the break instead of trying to finish the break. They're so much better when Ronald Moore is being the maestro. Instead of the guy who's trying to be the lead singer, the guy that set everybody else up. This is when their offense is humming, when the ball's in his hands, not scoring it, but getting others to score. Assist number a seven for Ronald Moore. And you see Rossiter with a big game in terms of rebounds, 15 already, and we're only three quarters of the way home. Ryder down by three with the basketball. 
Justin Robinson at the point. 6'2 junior from London, England. As you see, those are the first two fast break points, if you can believe it, scored by Siena in this match semifinal. And even though the Saints fans are starting to sense that maybe they're about to go on a run, this is exactly where Tommy Dempsey hoped to be at this point in the ballgame. Mansell off the mark. Rossiter with his 16th rebound. Said earlier today, he said, if you can get me to the point where Manhattan was with about 10 minutes left, I'll take it. Sign me up right now. Well, they're in that position. Now they've got to do what Manhattan couldn't do. Settle down, execute, and keep it uncomfortable for the Saints. Rossiter in his comfort zone gives Siena its largest lead of the afternoon as we head to break. We're back in Albany, 921 remaining in the second half. Siena has opened up a five-point lead thanks to a 9-0 run. And don't miss out on the excitement. Still not too late to get your tickets for the Citizens Bank MAC Men's Championship game tomorrow night here at the Times Union Center in Albany. Get your tickets by calling 1-800-30-EVENTS or by logging on to timesunion.com. The Citizens Bank MAC Basketball Championships where magic happens. Ronald Moore, the maestro, continues to rev things up for the Saints. And you see, not scoring the basketball, not shooting, but delivering the basketball, doing what he does best. As we said, tops in the country in assists. He's got his assist total up to eight. And just like that, they get on a run because he's the guy that's orchestrating everything. Ronald Moore now with nine points and eight assists, as you see. He found his jump shot that has been missing for so long in the first half. But here in the second half, he has not had to take those shots. He's been finding his teammates, and that's what he's more accustomed to. And you see back and forth the entire way. Neither team has been able to get much separation. We talked earlier, this is where Tommy Dempsey wanted to be. Now they've got to execute coming down the stretch. Not only of the game, but coming down the stretch, each and every possession of the shot clock. Shot clock at two. Mansell misses again. Franklin with a rebound. And they need him to do what he's in there to do. Make some of those threes. Owen Wignot has come into the ball game for Siena. He's not making threes. He's not doing a lot more for you. Jackson, the three-point specialist, and then some for Siena. Well, he's second in the league in threes made on the season. It's taken him a while to get going here in this back tournament, but he's going right now. Thompson, Moore, scrapping. Foul on Wignot. Crowd doesn't like it. A mad scramble, but terrific energy and hustle by Ryan Thompson to initially keep that basketball alive. We are here in Albany, New York at the Citizens Bank Mac Basketball Championship presented by Pepsi Max. Doug Sherman along with Rod Kennedy and Vin Parisi. So glad you could join us here for the first of our two semifinals. Our upcoming game will pit the Fairfield Stags against the Niagara Purple Eagles. And the Saints in their zone, and Ryder's got to probe. Got to get into the lane. Ganson left alone. He knew he left it short, and then he goes over the back. Oh, you're right. He knew he pulled the trigger on that a bit. Robinson got himself into the lane. Little drag back, and with that over the back, the fourth foul on Gadsden. Well, Rossiter has certainly picked up his game here in the second half at both ends of the floor. 17 rebounds along with his eight points, so very near to another double-double for the junior from Staten Island. Eubulus back to Moore on the give-and-go. Moore from the corner, hits another three. Well, he was the guy that initiated it by getting into the gap. You see the emotion trying to get the crowd into it. There's a reason why they've won 36 straight games in this building. That reason is they score in bunches. When they get on one of those runs like they're on right now, that's when they're able to seal the deal. 15 straight points scored by the regular season champs from Siena and looking to add to that total. Moore with a strip, trying to beat Thompson, who picks up the foul. Ronald Moore playing with as much passion now as we have seen all season. And because of that, the crowd feeding off of it as well. The guy that orchestrates things right now getting everybody running out to the 11-point lead. The 2010 Citizens Bank Mac Basketball Championships are brought to you by 
Pepsi Max. Maximum taste, maximum energy, zero calories. FYE, FYE strictly for your entertainment. Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. And by the 2010 Citizens Bank Mac Basketball Championships, where magic happens. The top seeded Siena Saints on a 15 0 run to take an 11 point lead after trailing Ryder for the most part here this afternoon. And the catalyst has been the senior point guard from Conshohocken, in Pennsylvania, Ronald Moore. And you see those nine assists, six of them here in the second half, when he's been able to get them out on the run, closing in on Jared Jordan's record for assists here inside the Mac. And if he's able to break that record, it also puts him into the top 25 all-time in the history of college basketball. Meanwhile, his running mate in the backcourt, Clarence Jackson, has begun to knock down his shots. And that combination has helped to spur this 16-0 run. Yeah, three out of four from beyond the three-point line here in the second half when they really needed him. Again, if you're going to face zone all the time, you've got to be able to make some shots. He finally has. Winding down on the seven minute mark. From the high post, quick move by Penn to snap that run. And again, not panicking, putting the ball in the soft spot against the zone and attacking the rim and staying with your game plan. You and I were talking during that break. Do you abandon your game plan and try and pick up the pace? You and I both agreed, no, stay with it because at least now you're giving yourself a fighting chance. Because again, we bore witness to the two regular season matchups where Sienna blew Ryder out. So with the adjustment as you talked about, Rob, defensively, Ryder's been able to control the pace. And even at this slower pace for them, they're still able to score. It's not like they're taking the wind out of it completely. Yep, no. Nope. But this is a huge possession right here. You got to get the lead down to a manageable single digits. Still plenty of time. Ringgold has his pass taken by Franklin, who saves it to Moore. Up ahead, Rossiter. Catch. Layup. What an assist. Well, the double-double for Ronald Moore. Terrific feed right there. His fourth of the season. You think of double-double guys, you think of guys that are rebounding the basketball. With Ronald Moore, it's getting guys easy shots. That's also a double-double for Rossiter, the man you expect to have those double-doubles. He leads the league in that category. Then the answer from Ringgold. Ronald Moore now too shy of the all-time Mac assist record. Jared Jordan, the All-American point guard at Marist a few years back, holds that record for the moment. Jubilus, mid-range shot. And here in the second half, he started to find himself a couple of good looks. Had a quiet game last time out in the quarterfinals. Relatively quiet here in the semis. There he picks up the defensive rebound off the miss by Penn. Ryder led by as many as six points earlier this half. Siena, though, uses a big 16-0 run to take control. Moore kicks to the side. Eubulus wide open. But you see Ronald Moore not tempted to take that shot even when he got himself into the lane. He was wide open, but he saw Eubulus out of the corner of his eye. Moore pokes the ball away. He and Thompson come together. It'll be Ryder basketball. The Mac is now on Facebook. Make sure to catch up on the latest Mac news by logging on to Facebook.com slash Mac Sports and becoming a fan. Doug Sherman, Rob Kennedy, Vin Parisi. Here in Albany, another steal for Siena. And you can't give them those extra possessions. Another turnover. Tenth of the game so far for the Bronx. Jackson, Rossiter, Uvalis, Moore, Franklin. All five starters for Siena for the first time in conference history on the all-star teams. Three first-teamers, a second-teamer, and a third-teamer. As announced earlier this week here in Albany. Ball knocked away from behind by Robinson. And the Bronx take it back. Ringgold gives off to Thompson. And Thompson fires away. That's a two-point shot. And the timeout called by the Bronx. Now Tommy Dempsey right here. You got yourself back to a 10-point deficit. Big three right there for Thompson. You force the toner over at the other end, and then you turn it into a quick shot at the other. Well, Siena has picked up the pace, led by Ronald Moore, and with their shooting, it has really picked up in the second half. Well, every once in a while, it 
you just got to make some shots. And Fran McCaffrey was talking about that. And the Manhattan game, he said, you know what? We had good looks. We just didn't make them. Ronald Moore will continue to have looks like that throughout the rest of this season because guys are going to play off of him. Well, he's made him pay, especially early in the first half. But here in the second half, hasn't been looking for that shot. Even when he's been open, last possession, a couple of possessions ago, nobody was guarding him, got himself into the lane, had himself a six-footer instead, kicked it out to try and get Ubalis going. One more point by Edwin Ubalis, who has the ball now, and all five Siena starters will be in double figures. So there's that balance Siena is always looking for, led by Moore at the point. And with that timeout, Tommy Dempsey saying we got to get out of the zone defense. We got to get up. We got to make sure that we've got guys in front of us and try and see if we can't come up with some important stops to stay in this ball game. Ten to shoot. Jackson works the baseline, and the foul called as Jonathan Thompson gave him a shove. And that'll take us to our under four minute media timeout. A step away as Siena has itself a 10 point advantage. Back in Albany with Siena holding a 10 point lead with a spot in tomorrow night's MAC Finals on the line. And time now to take a look at our Pepsi Max slam of the game. It goes to Brandon Penn off that terrific feed from Mike Ringle. Remember, he had a swing and a miss on a potential dunk the play before, but he stayed with it. Ringle with a terrific feed to find Penn, who's now taking a seat. Ryder Bronx has given a terrific effort. Their game plan has worked. They were able to hang around, but there was that one stretch, the 15-0 run, as Ronald Moore got them out on the run. On the break, coming up with some steals and then attacking at the other end. That's really been the biggest difference. Well, Rob, at the seven-minute mark, you and I agreed that Coach Dempsey should stick with the game plan. Now with 3.34 to go and down 11, what do you think? No, you got to get up. you got to force some turnovers. You're only going to make up that deficit if the other team obliges. So you got to get up and put some pressure on the basketball. Ryder down 12, three and a half minutes remaining in regulation. And we talked about the fact they use this 1-2-2 to either speed you up or slow you down. Saw them trying to force the pace earlier in the game. Now they use it to try and force you to take some time off the shot clock. And Jackson steps into the passing lane. And the tomahawk. Can we take back that slam of the game, by the way? <laughs> well, here's the new slam of the game as he comes up with the steal. They do a great job of closing down into passing lanes out of that 1-2-2. Two, two. As we said initially, trying to back off and just get into passing lanes, force you to take time off the clock. You see shot clock already down to 24. So the half-court trap, you don't have to just go trap out of it. It serves its purpose by forcing you to take some time late in the ball game. And the crowd still buzzing off of that dunk by Clarence Jackson. Robinson hits the three. He's got nine. Let's take another look at Clarence Jackson, whose father of the same name played a year at the University of Pittsburgh. His father was a high school teammate of Lionel Simmons back in the day in Philly. And I'm sure that that generation approves of this generation with the tomahawk dunk. That was pretty. Yeah, great close down to get into the passing lane. Looks like a free safety closing on the ball. Got himself right into the lane and then quickly getting down the floor and throwing it down. Now well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first and second rounds return to HSBC Arena in Buffalo this 19th and 20th month of March. For ticket information, log on to ncaa.slash mbb tickets. Let me say that again ncaa.com slash mbb tickets. So Mansell finds himself inside the three point line. Little gun shy, he's missed a couple of those threes, then have the confidence to let it fly. Thompson lets it fly. He's been hot from the start, now 21 points to lead the Bronx. No lack of confidence there. But they've got to come up with some stops. Can't trade baskets here. Got to do it at the defensive end. That's just too easy for Siena. Well, Mansell has gotten a lot of minutes in this ball game. 23 so far. His express purpose of being on the floor is to hit threes. He's missed four of his five attempts. And that's tough to make up against a lineup like Siena because there are no gimmies 
in the other five. Alex Franklin now with a quiet 17 and now 18 points. He very quietly evolved over four years into the Conference Player of the Year. Yeah, doing it because he just brings effort and energy. And he gets quiet points because sometimes you miss some of those offensive rebounds and putbacks. But when they're sluggish offensively, he has a knack for coming up with a couple of putbacks and all of a sudden you get yourself going. Crowd here in Albany can feel a return trip for the fourth straight year into the MAC championship game. Now a minute 40 away with a 13-point lead. And again, keeping an opponent under 70 points. This will be their 45th consecutive win when they keep opponents under 70 points. And that's one of the things. You come up with the game plan. How are you going to beat the Saints if you try and slow the ball game down, limit possessions? But one thing about the Saints, they still always seem to be able to figure out a way to go get points for themselves. And when we've seen teams beat them, it's much like Niagara was able to do. Score the basketball. Get it up and down the floor. I think, you know, as a coach, when you set your game plan, it really puts some pressure on you. you got it. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Are we going to try and run with them? Well, Tommy Dempsey tried that for two games. It didn't work. So he says, you know what? Got to switch it up. You try to slow it down. But the Saints, even when you got them in that grind, still somehow find a way to get on one of those runs and get their points. Well, Ryder came in and executed that game plan and did a great job for a long time here today against the league heavyweight and gave them all they could handle for a good 30 minutes. Yep, and that's exactly where it was. About the 10-minute mark, and that's what Tommy Dempsey said. Get me to that point, and I think we'll be able to find a way, will our way compete and finish the game off. Well, I think they did their job, but Ronald Moore and the Saints were just a little bit too fast took him a long time to get out and transition but then all of a sudden Ronald Moore got a couple leak outs a couple steals and then they were off and running remember the first half Ryder led at the intermission 30 28 and the only Siena player in that first half with multiple field goals made was Ronald Moore Franklin was getting himself to the line but other than that they didn't have much offense no, good point and that was part of the game plan to allow Moore to shoot the basketball and not pass it so he had only three assists in that first half but when he started racking up the assists in the second half that's when they got on that game changing run shot clock turned off as the foul is called Alex Franklin his first personal foul And Fran McCaffrey's team continues to put up those gaudy numbers. Looks like it's going to be 37 in a row in this building. As we said, 45 straight with keeping an opponent under 70 points. So pretty much going in, that's got to be one of their game plans to keep them down. Michael Ringel had great effort all game long. And it appears to be the end of the line for Ryan Thompson as he has been taken out of the ball game and hugs down the line on what has been a fabulous college career and there's his father who has been at most if not all of the games Chuck taking pictures of his son going out for the final time and behind us a standing ovation from the Ryder fans but across the way as well a lot of people in green and gold on their feet again very knowledgeable fans here in Albany and they recognize what a great career Ryan Thompson has had well a well played game on both sides well coached well competed, good sportsmanship, two of the better teams in the league, a real shining moment, but the better team will survive in advance to tomorrow night's championship game. The Siena Saints improved to 26-6 and with a 10-point victory over Ryder. And able to extend the nation's second longest home winning streak, and the crowd as well, Doug, I think they played a role when Ronald Moore, our player of the game, got going and got them on a run. Remember, just three assists in that first half, but seven important assists, many in the midst of that game-changing run. Indeed, our Pepsi Max player of the game with his fourth double-double of the year. Hey, his teammate Ryan Rossiter, as you see, he had himself another double-double as this team goes back to the championship game for a fourth year in a row. This now senior class of Alex Franklin, Edwin Ubalis, and Ronald Moore knows nothing else but getting to Monday in the MAC tournament. Yeah, 10-1 in their career, and... As